Welcome back to Dusting History and the first of my rapid fire rounds. This here is another airship image, the mooring of Mast R33. And generally with an image that's overblown like that, I'll try and use the levels adjustment layer to adjust the blacks and the whites, but you can see it's not very successful. So instead, I'm gonna use a curves tool. And see there's a little hand icon there. If you click and drag where you want to adjust on the image, it actually adjusts the curve point directly under that level of luminance, which is a very handy thing I didn't realize until recently. So you can see there, I can get something rather balanced and then I can put another levels adjustment layer on top. And then with those two things, I've got a nice exposure for the sky without crushing the underside of the blimp or vice versa. Next, I pop into the neural network filters and turn on the photo restoration tab and wanting to try and take some of the scratches out of the image but this is a common side effect of scratch removal you see those wires are getting removed when i used it so can't really do that so all that's left to do is to manually remove all the dots and spots as normal so this is using the remove tool i'm not going to do much more other than give this picture a clean a levels adjustment layer with a gradient to try and get rid of some of the uh, overexposed edges of the frame. Now this next one is the last blimp image for a while, I promise you. <laughs> Zeppelin number three in Shed. It's actually not a blimp either. I don't know why they're listed as blimps um, when they're um, airships. This is very noisy and it's also got a lot of motion blur in it, obviously being taken from a boat out on the lake. So I'm going to use Topaz Photo AI and see if I can improve the sharpness of the image. It has blurry settings, but also motion blur settings. So I'll fiddle with those until I can kind of see an appreciable difference in the resolution. Even those people directly underneath it seem to sharpen up somewhat. So another curves adjustment layer here. And again, using that little hand tool, sliding up and down on the image, trying to balance out the curve, which is uh, so awesome. I wish I knew about that uh, a long time ago. <laughs> All right, time to remove dirt. So I've duplicated that down, collapsed it, and now I can go in and, and get clean. One of the side effects of sharpening in Photo AI is that you can see it's actually put like almost a, a little drop shadow or a, a bevel around every little speck as part of its sharpening, which does help to show up the dirt, makes it easier to see, but it's also um, annoying. I'm not, I'm not quite sure whether I prefer to, to despot first and then sharpen or the other way around i haven't quite settled on a on a preference love this handwriting As you can see, I tend to work in islands. I do a sky and then I work around the water. Yeah, ze zeppelins are great because you can work on every little square like its own discrete little island. And uh, before you know it, you've got to the end and, and everything's clean.
Now you can kind of see there's a lot of variation in the sky. This is partially uh, a cleanup I did. I actually go back later uh, and I didn't record it where I clone brushed a lot of the sky from the center outwards to make it more even. Here you can see I'm putting a levels adjustment layer above it all and just painting color which didn't actually suit. It, it does clean it up a bit but it is a bit of a fake look. So I went back later and did a proper uh, job of it. Again, fixing the overexposed edges of the image. Such an amazing photograph, I just love it. Now I had no idea that they could shoot panoramas back in the day. This is from 1905. In, at the Yarra River in Melbourne, Australia um, and it's now like that part of the city is just all high-rise buildings and the bit hard left there is now a big riverfront dining precinct but uh, it's lovely to see what it used to be back in the day. And another photo from the same photographer, this time of Port Melbourne. Now the interesting thing with this is there's a split in the centre of the image and it looks like two different images stuck together, but it just so happens to have cut right along the bow of that black ship in the middle of frame. And what I discover after I've adjusted the curves and I start to do a cleanup is that this image is actually offset. Um, the details don't line up left to right. So you can see here I start to clean up the damage and once I've done that you can see that I'll notice that, <laughs> that none of those horizontal lines actually line up. Now this is using the remove tool but I've check boxed or turned off the, uh, the option to update for every stroke so you can do a large patch like that and uh, then hit go once. So I'll select this left hand side of the image, copy and paste it. Once I've duplicated things down, copy, paste and you can see there's that offset there. I'm going to just translate that left hand side up by a handful of pixels. sort of to visually match the left to the right. And then using the remove tool again, I can draw over that mismatch and it does a really good job of lining the two sides up. I've got half a mind to come back and colorize this one. It's a, it's a lovely picture.
So a couple of quick levels adjustments, a few grades here, here and there, and I think uh, the image is looking pretty good. Now, here I am in Photo AI, Topaz Photo AI, and I'm just sort of seeing if a little bit more sharpening would uh, benefit this, this panorama. It's amazing what it can do. Sometimes it can go too far, but you can kind of see there before and after. It's quite a difference. So just removing that big crack down the center line has made this image far more appealing, let alone all the dirt and scratches. <laughs> so this one is interesting. I found this image. This is of Flinders Street Station in Melbourne, which is now in the very heart of the CBD. Um, I've never seen this picture before. I think it's fantastic. So again, using the curves tool to try and find a balance. Once I'm happy with that, I can get onto cleaning. Now you can see there's somebody's put fingerprints over those blurry people, and there's all those tiny little white dots. I was really leaving that to last, worrying about how I was going to deal with that, but uh, turned out the only way to do it is just to touch every dot with the remove tool and hope that it goes away. You can see here and there I use clone brush to try and clone some detail into areas where there is some loss. Love the moustache of the guy sitting on the back of the, the tram there. And a doggo on the right, good to see. So here's this area I told you about before where there's just these dots and generally that's sort of indicative of a, a fingerprint or something like that and uh, it's so low detail there there's so many motion blurred or out of focus people it just became a mush I wasn't not, wasn't sure what I was drawing on on what so So there you go, I think that's quite improved. All I know about this image is that it's called the Gunpowder Storeship. I presume it's somewhere in Australia, but what a cool picture. So first thing I'll do is remove the, the mount edges with the remove tool. And then as you can see, this is a particularly dirty image. There is just stuff everywhere. And annoyingly so on the trees in the background, which are very low detail. Starting with the photo restoration pass into the neural filters, I'm gonna to look to see if I can reduce the scratches. But what it did, which wasn't great, was just really softened off the image too much. You can sort of see the amount of loss there. It sort of does negate some of the dirt, but at the expense of the detail on the ship. 
So I cancelled that, I didn't go with that. Instead I went back to Topaz, Photo AI, gave that a go. And you can see here that's done a really great job of sharpening it up and sort of minimising some of the bigger grain and some of the um, smaller dots. It actually pulls the uh, damage into sharp relief, which makes it painting it away a lot easier. Crazy how good this looks once you get all the dots off it. I know when you're zoomed out you don't see the dots anyway, but uh, being up close like this and just making a patch of that uh, water nice and clear makes me feel good about, <laughs> about what I'm doing. So I tried to do a whole bunch at once here, but you can see it actually damaged or didn't do a great job of making a flat surface. So I've kind of abandoned that. I thought that would save me some time, but I ended up going back to uh, dot for dot. The interesting thing too is this tool looks around it for uh, appropriate pieces of data to put underneath the brush stroke and if you uh, start on a little clear section it seemingly uses that clear section to then inform the other sections after it so if you do a huge chunk at once it seems to leave a lot of garbage I mean that's my understanding anyway so here I put a levels adjustment layer above everything and was sort of just to help me see where the dirt was but now I've used a frequency separation action, which basically splits the high frequency and low frequency data apart. So I can paint very, very roughly into both of those layers and essentially remove the dots in the sky in one go. I have other videos that sort of go into frequency separation in more detail. And then it's straight back onto removing dots bit by bit. Here you can see some of the trouble I had with the trees. There were lots of these uh, swoopy scratches as well as tons of dots and spots and working out what might be a tree branch and what might be a, uh, a scratch or a blemish was tough. So anything kind of vertical stayed and anything kind of diagonal or horizontal I got rid of. General rule of thumb, I think it turned out okay.
Okay, so kind of getting close here. I do come back and tidy things up a bit later, but here is a color pass done by palette.fm, which is a, an online colorizing tool, which I think does a spectacular job. So using that as a basis, I've now got a paintbrush and a color picker and I'm cleaning up and repainting where I want. So I made the ship red. I think it or the boat it came in as a kind of a bluey purpley thing and it was patchy it had bits that were brown and whatnot so before i started recording this i at least swung that around to sort of the color i want and so now you can just see i'm, I'm just going to do a ton of painting i absolutely think a gunpowder ship should be red Cool, that's that one done. I hope you enjoyed that series of uh, quick paint overs. Thank you very much for coming along. We'll see you next time.